Hey Emily, it's been a while. How have you been? I know, right? I've been good, just busy with work and reading in my free time. How about you? Same here. Reading has been my escape lately. What have you been reading recently? Oh, I just finished a book called The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. Have you heard of it? Yes. I've heard amazing things about it, but haven't had a chance to read it yet. How did you like it? I absolutely loved it. It's such a magical and atmospheric book. The writing is so beautiful, and the world Morgenstern creates just pulls you in. It's unlike anything I've read before. That sounds incredible. I've been really into fantasy lately, so I think I'll add it to my reading list. Speaking of which, do you have a favorite genre, or do you like to mix things up? I think I tend to gravitate toward fantasy and historical fiction. I love getting lost in different worlds and times. There's something about exploring places and eras that are so different from our own that really captivates me. How about you? I'm the same. Fantasy is definitely my favorite, but I also enjoy a good mystery or thriller. There's something so satisfying about trying to piece together the clues and solve the mystery before the characters do. Oh, I love a good mystery. Have you read any Agatha Christie? Yes. I'm a huge fan of her work. And Then There Were None is one of my all-time favorites. The way she builds suspense and keeps you guessing until the very end is just brilliant. I know, right? She's a master of the genre. I remember reading Murder on the Orient Express and being completely blown away by the twist. I didn't see it coming at all. Same here. That twist was genius. Christy really knew how to keep readers on the edge of their seats. Do you find that you're more into classic mysteries, or do you also enjoy modern ones? I like both, actually. I think classic mysteries have a certain charm, but I've also enjoyed some more recent thrillers. Have you read The Girl on the Train by Paula Hawkins? I have. That was such a gripping read. The unreliable narrator kept me second-guessing everything. I love books like that, where you can't quite trust the main character and you're not sure what's real and what's not. Me too. It adds another layer of suspense. I also really liked Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn for the same reason. That book had me hooked from start to finish. Oh, Gone Girl was intense. Flynn's writing is so dark and twisted, but in the best way. Her characters are so complex and flawed, which makes the story even more compelling. Exactly. I think that's what makes psychological thrillers so interesting, the focus on the characters' minds and motivations. It's not just about solving a crime, it's about understanding what drives people to do the things they do. That's a great point. I think that's why I've been drawn to more character-driven stories lately, even outside of thrillers. I've been reading a lot of literary fiction that really delves into the human experience. That's wonderful. Do you have any recommendations? Yes, I recently read Normal People by Sally Rooney, and it was such an emotionally raw and thought-provoking book. It explores the complexities of relationships, communication, and how people grow and change over time. It's very character-focused, which I loved. I've heard so much about that book. It's on my list. I've been really into books that focus on personal growth and relationships lately too. I find it fascinating how authors can capture the intricacies of human emotion. Absolutely. 
Rooney does that so well. Her writing feels very honest and unfiltered, which makes the characters so relatable, even when they're making mistakes. It feels real, you know? I love that kind of authenticity in writing. I think it's one of the reasons I enjoy memoirs so much. There's something about reading someone's true story that resonates deeply with me. Oh, I agree. Memoirs can be so powerful. I recently read Educated by Tara Westover, and it was such an eye-opening and inspiring read. Her journey from growing up in a strict, survivalist family to eventually earning a PhD from Cambridge was incredible. Wow, that sounds amazing. I've heard of that one but haven't picked it up yet. I love memoirs that show resilience and personal transformation. There's something so motivating about reading how people overcome challenges. Definitely. It's a reminder that no matter where you start, you can achieve great things with determination and hard work. Are there any memoirs you'd recommend? Yes, I'd highly recommend Becoming by Michelle Obama. It's such an inspiring book, and she writes so beautifully about her life, from her childhood in Chicago to her time as First Lady. It's both personal and political, and I found it really empowering. That's been on my list for a while. I love Michelle Obama and have heard nothing but great things about her memoir. I'm definitely going to move it up on my reading list. You'll love it, I'm sure. Her story is so relatable in many ways, but also incredibly inspiring. It's one of those books that stays with you long after you've finished reading it. That's the best kind of book the ones that make you think and reflect. Do you prefer physical books, ebooks, or audiobooks, by the way? I'm a bit old-fashioned, so I prefer physical books. There's something about holding a book in my hands and flipping through the pages that just feels right. But I do listen to audiobooks when I'm commuting or doing chores. How about you? I'm the same. I love the feel of a physical book, but I've started reading more ebooks lately, just for convenience. And audiobooks are great for multitasking. I think it depends on my mood and what I'm doing. That makes sense. I think audiobooks are a great way to get through more books when you don't have time to sit down and read. Do you have a favorite audiobook narrator? Oh, that's a tough one. I recently listened to the Harry Potter series on audiobook, and Jim Dale, the narrator, was amazing. He brought all the characters to life in such a vivid way. I've heard great things about his narration. I think a good narrator can really enhance the audiobook experience. It's like a performance rather than just reading words on a page. Exactly. It adds a whole new dimension to the story. I think that's one of the reasons why audiobooks have become so popular. It's almost like listening to a podcast or radio drama. That's a good point. I think I'll give more audiobooks a try. Do you think audiobooks count as reading, though? That's a great question. I personally think they do. You're still consuming the same story and content, just in a different format. I don't think it matters whether you're reading the words or listening to them. It's still a form of literacy. I agree. I've seen some debates about it, but I think the important thing is that people are engaging with stories and learning, no matter how they do it. Exactly. In the end, it's all about enjoying the process and connecting with the material, whether it's through reading or listening. Speaking of which, what's next on your reading list? I'm thinking of picking up Circe by Madeline Miller. I've heard it's a fantastic retelling of Greek mythology, 
and I've been in the mood for something mythological and epic. Oh, I loved Circe. Miller's writing is stunning, and the way she reimagines the myth of Circe is so fresh and empowering. It's one of those books that you'll want to savor. That's exactly what I've been looking for. I love mythology and how it explores timeless themes. Have you read The Song of Achilles by Miller as well? Yes, I have, and it's just as beautiful. It's a heart-wrenching love story, but also a deeply moving exploration of heroism, loyalty, and fate. You're in for a treat with both books. I can't wait. It sounds like it'll be an emotional but rewarding read. I love books that make me feel something deeply. Same here. I think that's what makes a book truly great the emotional connection it creates. Whether it's joy, sadness, or inspiration, a good book leaves a lasting impact. Absolutely.